Composer Gloves here, and today we're going to be moving forward, and we're going to make some sort of an intro type thing. Now, I have somewhat of an idea of what I want to do, so let's get right down to it. So this is what we got uh, right now. In fact, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play this, and then I'm going to... Uh, I'm gonna play this. I'm gonna play this. Uh, here's what we got. So that's what we got to sort of work with. Um, I have an idea of where I want to take it, but really quick, here's a preview of what we're gonna do in this session. So that's the preview. Um, there, my thoughts now, because for you people watching, this is a preview. You need to know this is not done. It's a very, very rough draft. Um, I like the idea of having space. I feel like not having a lot of things going on is kind of a cool, a cool thing. It's easy to focus in on one thing, but that thing has to be really interesting. So I'm thinking about doing that. Uh, I'm considering lightening up the melody changes I have here because I feel like I'm beginning to do one thing and then I go into another thing. So that's not necessarily the best move right there. Uh, structurally, things can still be moved around. I may like, you know, may still, I'm still reserved the right to make major changes. There's a weird click right here that I believe is just a result of these things happening before at the same time as the note getting triggered so i'm just gonna lengthen these out and make them a bit longer let's really quick just give this a listen make sure that one's fixed hey yeah that was it that was the problem okay cool so now i'm going to progress i have no idea what i'm going to do yet uh well i have somewhat of an idea but you have just heard a preview you got to peer forward in time so the first thing i want to do is i think this would be a really cool way to start it off okay cool so and then you know you go here you you make the thingy unique and you're like, oh yeah, I want to make some more interesting chords. So then we're like, okay, uh, interesting chords. Yeah, those things. So I'm going to add one of these. Oh yeah. So it's gonna be sort of a thing, and then we'll repeat it. And on this one, we're gonna take this one up, an octave, an oct, an octave. And then we're gonna do that, that, we're gonna take this B down here, we're gonna take this D, put it down here, we're gonna take this E, put it down here. I like that move a little bit better. Okay, cool. So yeah, that's, uh, that's music theory stuff. Go check out my music theory series if you're curious about uh, how that works. Okay, so now let's see here. We gotta get some inspiration. I feel like our piano could come in right around there and you know, start m with things. 
So yeah, let's uh, whoa, buddy. I just want this. <laughs> You know what? I'm gonna probably write a custom, write a, ooh, that sounds fancy. I'm gonna write a custom part. That's right. Just make sure I'm on a new pattern. We settled on G as our second chord that's right. That's a good idea. I'm glad you thought of it. I'm gonna do this all in one part. Control A. And then on these ones, I'm gonna go C, B, G, E, A. Passing tone. And then on this one, make unique. Make it bigger. Gonna do something like that, making me have this big, this big thing right before it, and it's gonna get bigger, 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 and then boom, top, bah, you know that thing. Okay, cool. So, let's have a little filter. We got to do the fil filter, it filter that jazz. What the heck? No, I want the uh, the chord, the chord thing. Filter it, create an automation clip, and turn it down. We'll just do low pass. My not controlling the correct thing. Sequence. Um. Why is this not working? Crude low pass. Oh, it's on B. I need to do A as well. Ah, <laughs> good call. Um, just something I forgot. Okay, uh, link to controller. Do, 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 do. Frequency one filter accept. Keep this idea sort of going. It's melodic, so we're gonna do a lot of note writing. <coughs> oh man. This is gonna be like a, a mono thing. So the chords, we're outlining the key of the tune. So A should sound kind of cool, sort of going against uh, whatever we've got going on here, the chord structure. Okay, cool. So we're gonna do that. And then on this guy, 
Where's my frequency cutoff? We're gonna put him down here. Hey, look at even lines up with where he is over there. And keep him up. And then we're gonna have a sudden. We got we, we, uh, Houston, uh, we have a problem. Okay, so now this is where things, where you can do a lot of things that can get sort of crazy. So I don't, I just don't know uh, what I want to do exactly. If you want inspiration, you drink, uh, it's called Zing. That's what you drink when you do it. It's how you get inspiration. It's the proven method, uh, Burgess approved. I like this idea right there. We could have um, some sort of a wind riser thing and I will not go to a sample for this. I'll use massive riser. What do you mean a massive riser? I'm gonna pull out massive. Do, 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 do. Oh my gosh, it's up here. Before they had the cool organizational thing. I don't know why they got rid of it. And we're gonna use white noise and we're gonna automate the color. Turn this off. See, see? We'll use the tape hits. We'll use reverb. We'll use, no, we're not gonna use tape hits. We're gonna use bright noise. Okay, cool. And we're gonna get here. We're gonna go. Oh yeah, it doesn't matter what note you use. Dur, dur, dur. Okay, and put this here. I'm gonna do it here. Do, do, do. This is something that when you're producing, it's sort of up to you whether or not I have a lot of sample libraries. So it saves a lot of time because I could go through and make all the effects like this, but it would just take forever. Um, the benefit of doing it this way is you can sort of do some cool stuff. If you want to get like complicated, the option is available to you, but I don't care to get too complicated this go around. Okay, I'm gonna automate the volume on him too. He's pretty loud. Okie dokie, you go over here, you push this knob, you right click, you hit create automation clip, and then you push, uh, uh, you do this, bang. So he comes in si silently. Okay, and I want to also put some I want, I feel like there should be panning on this. So I'm gonna automate this panning. Why not go up and then down and then up and then down and then up and then down and then up and then down. We're going faster, do, 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 up, down. Take it easy, automation clips. Up, down, up, down. A little bit faster. This is like the most exciting part of any track is, is when you write this, when you write this. Yeah, this is, this is the life right here. Oh, look at that. We're getting faster. It might be a little weird because I started it on an offbeat, but who cares? Not me.
There we go. It's cool. Um, works. Uh, okay, now we need another part. So I feel like we should have some of our square lead wave in here. I'm just sold on the square lead thing. Oh, you know what? We could introduce this as part of the element too. Ooh, oh man, I don't know. This is square. Yes. Okay, well, let's see here. What? We're still in our intro. Here's where it would come in. It would like, it would be this great, grand, majestic thing. I'm thinking though, that we should, we should, ooh, layer it. No, I don't know. Ooh, man. Ooh, man, bro, dude. Ooh, you getting the ooze? I'm getting, I got a bad case of the ooze. I want to use this one. So it's like a variation. Square intro. So. And we'll keep the delay theme going. We'll, we'll put a reverb on it. We'll put a delay on it. Delay synced. And we'll leave it like that. Um, why? Oh, there we go. So here we go. This is going to be more of a melodic thing. And we're going to play around in the upper end. We're going to hide the high stuff from a, uh, from our listener for now. Come into cell. Uh, what was the next chord? A, was it E? That'll be our starting point. G, A, G, O, it's, what is that, F? It's a weird looking chord, forgot what I called it. Looks like D minor, I might have called it F at some point, I don't know. Whoops. Uh, so we're going to carry the melody on over here. See, the sound design is not really a crazy thing. Do -da -da. So when, when we do this move, it's going to get really bright on the upper end. I just, it's just the way it is. So I need to do a thing. Do, 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 do. Hit this button, do that. Drag it over here. We're going to put it right here, right on number 29. 29 seems like a great spot to do this kind of a thing. Okay, so I'm going to do an EQ. And I'm going to do something like that. And then, of course, I can change this later if I so desire. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to automate the EQ to turn on. That way I don't lose my ears over this. Okay, so...
considering whether or not I want to do eight bars or or sixteen bars, eight more bars. Oh, buddy, I don't know. Let's let's just do it from the beginning. Let's hear it. Oh my gosh, why are you not? Oh, it's the filter. That's a sort of break. That'd be kind of a cool thing. Let's see here. Okay. This stuff is like stuff that you you got to spend a lot of time sort of just thinking about wh what it is you want to do because it can get, get quite complicated. This like this, you don't want to do too much. We don't want it to do too little. La la la. It's just a mess. This uh this chord thing though could be louder. Oh, it's because I have the mix on. That's the deal. Make it unique. That'll solve my automation problem. I'm not sure I want that to be my riser. I don't know. I feel like this this part could be it could go. Something like that. We could do one of those like speeding up like hey warning 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 we are doing a riser warning kind of things ah, ah. okay let's do let's do this Go over here do that then pull this over do this then we get another massive riser right here This one, make unique. You know what, never mind. I'm not gonna do what I was seen I was gonna do. This will be interesting. So
This should really start over here. Could have a hanging note as a one bar. Make unique. I really just need to start hitting um when I do that kind of stuff. Okay, and then forget this. So let's take our melody. Just off by what the heck? Okay, where is it? There it is. Piano, I'm going to throw an EQ. I'm gonna high pass it. Create whoops. No, I don't want to do that. Um, create an automation clip. And the piano is going to be turning this thing off at the beginning of our track, of course. We don't want that, so we're gonna make unique and simply do that. This part should be... Part of the piano is going there though. If we turn this off. It doesn't matter. I'm cutting it off of the source. Shouldn't matter. My, I'm on the piano channel. Pattern one. Um, seventeen. Channel seventeen. Channel seventeen. Channel seventeen. We need a more severe, I'm going to use a more severe filter. Fruity free filter. Okay. And this is going to be a high pass. Nope. I have it on the wrong thing. It's got to be on the wrong thing. There's no way it's impervious. There's another line. It's not just the piano. I thought it was on the same thing. Oh, buddy. I totally forgot I had a layer lead. That's embarrassing. Crap like that comes up when you're working though. Okay, so where's my piano? It's over here. I'm gonna take both of these. I'm gonna do the same thing to both. So the EQ is fine on the piano. I'm gonna go to the layer lead and do the same thing. EQ. And then create an automation clip.
wanted to reach the max until right here. I have all sorts of issues right here. Just... out another slot another lots hey it's perfect like this go like this go like this whoops like that uh, did I make my noise envelopes unique I did not make unique go like that Make unique. It's not anywhere else, but I don't care. I'm making it unique. We need a little riser right there. I have a bunch of little risey samples. I'm gonna take this though. I'm gonna stretch it to be two bars. I'm gonna make it control L, control S, move this over. I'm gonna have a whole thing for just this. I'm make it like channel 37. And we're gonna put a reverb on it. And a delay on it. We're actually going to do delay first, then the reverb. A lot of wet. We're going to automate the volume. Stretching, stretching, stretching. This one we're gonna outline our chords differently.
And then let's find a loop of some kind. They have a whole bunch of great drum loops in here. Just a high loop of something of some sort. There's a part of this loop that I like. I don't want to be on stretch mode anymore. I just want that part. Okay, cool. We're gonna hit Control L. This is gonna be. I have a feeling I ha might have more drum loops coming. Maybe not. But I'll put on 39. Why are you spacing things out? Well, it's just easier to see where things are. I've got all these mixture tracks. Might as well space them out, you know. So I'm gonna put a uh, an EQ, a parametric EQ2. I'm gonna do this kind of a filter thing. I I do not know why I am favoring that method, but today I am just favoring it galore. So this kind. Let's see if there's a different section that might work better. You know what? I'm gonna. Hmm. I'm probably just gonna find a one shot sample instead. Oh my gosh. Oh, you know what? It's just a matter of pulling them to the front. Not that, I wanna, there it is. Did I stretch these by accident? Whatever, I'll redo it. Out stretch on. No, I didn't. Anyone know what went wrong? Time. to have a melody here, but I want it to be filtered.
You know what I'm thinking? Maybe I'll not filter it and rather... I will automate the pluck. Whoops. The portamento is going to be interesting. to vibrato. What the heck? We'll see if it even matters there. guy I think we're get we're getting somewhere I feel like we have we have something to be some sort of a thing and we need an impact sound there and again my favorite impact library is right here
kind of like that one for some of the stuff it's got spectrally in it. But let's uh, see if we could shape the volume a little bit better. <laughs> Drums could definitely be mixed better. I'm not gonna focus on the drop though. I wanna see. I'm going to call it uh, okay for right now because this has kind of been a long video, but we have now I'm going to, I'm going to play the preview right now. So here's the preview. And then I'll tell you sort of my thoughts about it afterwards. Well, additional thoughts that have now occurred. So here it is, is, um, here is the preview. So that's the preview. Um, there, my thoughts now, because for you people watching, this is a preview. You need to know this is not done. It's a very, very rough draft. Um, I like the idea of having space. I feel like not having a lot of things going on is kind of a cool, a cool thing. It's easy to focus in on one thing, but that thing has to be really interesting. So I'm thinking about doing that. Uh, I'm considering lightening up the melody changes I have here because I feel like I'm beginning to do one thing and then I go into another thing. So that's not necessarily the best move right there. Uh, structurally, things can still be moved around. I may like, you know, make still, I'm still reserved the right to make major changes. There's a weird click right here that I believe is just a result of these things happening before at the same time as the note getting triggered. So I'm just going to lengthen these out and make them a bit longer. Let's really quick just give this a listen, make sure that one's fixed. Hey, yeah, that was it. That was the problem. 
Uh, I noticed it earlier, but I didn't do anything. I don't know why. Well, I noticed it earlier, but I was doing something that I was trying to do. You know when you have, like, multiple things you're trying to do at the same time? You're like, ah. And then, so you just, you know, you pick the one that you think would make a bigger impact and would be less noticeable. Like this one, I knew it was going to hit me over and over and over because that's, like, a pretty noticeable thing. Uh, this, I think, at first I wasn't really liking this, but I bet after I come back, I think I might actually, because when I listened to it, I'm like, dang, that's bad. You cannot tell when this really goes away. Now, I was considering adding a layer to this, um, a base layer, but I might not because I like the idea that the base doesn't show up till way over here, like the real base. And so that's why I'm hesitant to add in any sort of snare drum or anything like that. I think it'd be cool to just have a big moment right there where it goes bang. But in order to do that, I've got to really get creative with the high end, which I, I think we're off to a pretty good running start. The melody right here is cool. This uh, this intro, these first couple notes, I don't think necessarily agree with it because I get up here pretty quick and there's this huge gap over an octave jump, which is one of the rules in basic melodic writing that if you want it to be a singable melody, you don't do that. And so this may not be the best idea. Just I just don't think it agrees with the track very much. But anyways, those are some of my thoughts. Uh, we got through some parts. Where we, I hit a creative block, and you know, this is sort of some stuff I tried to get around it. I th actually I think we're getting somewhere that's really pretty cool. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe. Wear an orange T-shirt today. Take a picture. Drop it on my Facebook page. Send it to me in a message. I don't know. I dig orange. If you have an orange guitar, you need to send a picture of that. And have a blessed day.